you know, what we would call objective morality, a lot of people would just say is, um, now I don't know a lot about this, I'm just, biologically, we're maybe programmed to be empathetic creatures, mm -hmm. and so when we see something that you'd call an injustice, yep. it's more of just, we're programmed because, um, you know, it's for the preservation of the human race, they would say, it, is that, you know, if you see someone being killed, it's not that it's wrong, it's that we see ourselves in that situation. And, and you know, I've heard people say something like the Holocaust wasn't, like, objectively wrong, it was just not preferable. Okay, you know? well, when people say the Holocaust is, objective, is not objectively wrong, I just need to say, if your worldview is telling you the Holocaust is not objectively wrong, you've just got the wrong worldview because you know it's objectively wrong. In fact, there was an atheist that debated William Lane Craig, a famous Christian apologist a number of years ago. Her name is Louise Anthony. And she admitted something to him about moral values. She said, any argument given for moral skepticism will be built on weaker premises than the fact that we know certain things are objectively right and other things are objectively wrong. In other words, any argument you give for atheism is based on weaker evidence than you, than you have that say torturing babies for fun is wrong or the Holocaust is wrong. So why would you take the weaker point of view that atheism's true when you have the very strong intuition that torturing babies for fun is wrong, rape is wrong, the Holocaust is wrong. So, and by the way, the evolutionary argument doesn't work for a number of reasons. Number one, evolution is a biological process. It doesn't give you moral oughts. Secondly, if evolution give us, gives us our moral thoughts, then evolution gives us all of our thoughts, including the thought that evolution gives us all of our thoughts. So why should we believe it's true? Right? It's a self-defeating proposition. Some of these evolutionists want to say that, in other words, that evolution gives us these moral uh, feelings, and they just want to reserve it to moral feelings. Well, why not? If, if you're going to say evolution gave you your moral feelings, Maybe evolution gave you all of your feelings or thoughts. Well, if that's the case, why believe what you believe is true? You're just a molecular machine. You're just a moist robot. You're not really reasoning. You're just reacting. So evolution does not work to give us objective moral values. Now, if you want, or, and, and let me say another thing, objective moral obligations. There's no mutating genetic code that has any authority to tell you, me, or anyone else how they ought to behave. But if they want to go down that road and they want to bite the bullet and say there are no objective moral values or objective moral obligations, I just say, you already know that's not the case. Deep in your heart, you know that's not the case. Now, you can maintain it to maintain your atheism, but it seems to me you're doing that because you just want to avoid the implications of theism.